Hello everybody, this is Blightwind bringing you another one of the games within the defense. This is uh, Potom Bottom up against Qu uh, Team Quantic. Potom Bottom is actually one of the teams that's relatively unheard of, but has been heralded as very, very good to watch. And, uh... They're heard talking about uh, the additions to the game that allow you to put a logo in so they've got all of their uh, sponsors let's have a look at what bottom bottoms got it is just the marana leap icon and that's pretty adorable but we're getting into the picks and bands here Dire team ban. looks like uh oh wow quantic has first ban first pick and their dire that's kind of surprising actually uh, normally you want to see teams that'll, uh, one team gets to be dire and then the uh, first pick first ban will go to the Radiant just because uh, the opinion is is that uh, the dire side of the map is a little bit of an advantage. Ten seconds so, remaining. but we'll have to see what the bans are. Uh, Five seconds remaining. We, uh... Broodmother first, so Radiant Broodmother, she's back. a very good uh, lane bully, I would guess would be the best term for it. She's able to push people out of lane, harass with the spiders, push towers incredibly well with that spider army. We're going to see a Chaos Knight Dire band out here. Back. I do believe that Korok has been uh, favoring Chaos Knight, so that's not too surprising, plus the fact that Reality Rift gives you so much chase potential chaos bolt if you get a four second chaos bolt on somebody then they are going to have a horrible day so not surprised to see that one uh we'll have to see what 10 seconds remaining if any strategies really form out five seconds remaining reserve time you know, that Chaos Knight was banned out pretty quick, so Bottom Bottom may just have an idea of who they want to ban right away. They don't want to uh, really change it at all. They've they've got certain Radiant heroes that they just back. don't want to go up against. We're going to see a Chen banned out. Chen, very good jungler. He's an alright ganker. Uh, not as powerful as, say, like an Enchantress, but he's also a fantastic pusher. Plus, you know, the team fight ability of... Hand of God Dark is huge. Back. Then we're going to see a Lycan band out here. Lycan, another good jungler. He's an incredibly good pusher. He's a decent ganker, especially once he hits six. That ult allows you to just chase people down forever. Uh, and if you get a BKB, then basically nothing can stop you short of the handful of abilities that actually go through magic immunity. <coughs> Sorry about that. Coffin a little bit. But uh, that's not a surprising one. It's Lycan is banned in pretty much every single game. Five seconds remaining. And uh, Quantic's actually putting a decent amount of thought into these bans. They're going to ban out a Brewmaster. Brewmaster, Radiant great team, team fight. Ban. Once you pop that ult, you have two forms of CC, some ridiculously good chase, Thunderclap, great damage, a good slow, uh, the chance to crit, the chance to shut down their carry with Drunken Haze. Uh, another one of those bands that we've been seeing pretty much all the time, so it's not all that surprising. Just uh, explaining why exactly the mi the mentality behind it, I guess. Ten seconds remaining. Then we'll see what the final ban out of bottom bottom is. Then we'll be able to get into the picks. Reserve time. It's gonna be a shadow demon. Shadow demon. He's actually a very Dire powerful support. Pick. He's got fantastic ganking with the uh, Soul Catcher Disruption combo. You know, you create a couple of illusions, especially if you get it on a carry, those illusions can hit decently, decently hard. They're actually gonna Radiant allow Team Quantic pick. to pick up an Invoker. Invoker you usually see banned out very uh, early on. Uh, Invoker's got just so much utility with the, t you know, 10 different spells he can mix up for himself. You've got offensive ones like Sunstrike, and Chaos Meteor and Cold Snap, and then you've got utility ones like the Ice Wall, the Ghost Walk, the Alacrity. It's just, it, it doesn't really matter what the situation is, Invoker is going to have something that will contribute. So we'll have to see what the two picks 
to counter this. Uh, invo it is possible to shut down an invoker, um, especially if you're able to shut him down in lane. That's the biggest thing. If you can pressure him and allow him, or deny him farm rather, within the lane, he's going to struggle a lot come the mid game. So we will have to see what exactly they do to uh, address this. Putting quite a bit of thought in here. I imagine quite a bit of discussion going on. They're going to pick up uh, Nature's Prophet and Darkseer, actually. Nature's Prophet is another one of those, if he squeaks through, uh, generally, if both Invoker and Nature's Prophet squeak through, you allow them to pick up one so that you can get the other. And then combined with Darkseer, Nature's Prophet, great jungler, great pusher, and he's a great ganker with the teleport, and then Darkseer brings a ton of teamfight potential. He's got the Vacuum, Surge to save people, Ion Shell to just cause some havoc within the team fight, Ten the Wall of remain. Illusions to basically screw over the team. If you can Five Vacuum them remain. into the wall, just tons of damage that'll come out. Unfortunately, the Aegonum Scepter, I mean, this is something that was changed many months ago, but the Aegonum Scepter no longer doesn't allow uh, allies to create illusions anymore. It just increases, it, it improves the illusions that are generated. Lashrak Enigma is going to be picked up by Quantic. Lashrak is another one of those heroes that's normally banned, but you can only ban so many, and he's got fantastic pushing. Uh, you can go Split Earth to set up ganks, you can go Lightning Bolt to allow you to push the lane out, which will in turn give you a larger creep wave, allow you some more Diabolic Edict damage, but we generally see the Edict-Split Earth combo. Enigma, great team fight. I mean, Black Hole, enough said. Uh, an AoE Five stun that remain. pulls people towards a central point and goes through Magic Immunity. Like, what, what else is there to say? Reserve Plus, he's got some great push with the Eidolons. Uh, at the moment, it's looking like a very powerful push team for Quantic. Even Invoker can contribute quite a bit with the, the Alacrity, the Forge Spirits. So I imagine we'll see some towers go down decently fast, and it would be nice to see some uh, counter push heroes like a Windrunner or an Earthshaker uh, be picked up. So anyone with a linear uh, nuke. That'll allow you to cr just annihilate creep waves, especially that'll uh, hinder the Lashrak. He really relies on having a creep wave there to tank the wave for him. Because he's a very squishy hero. He's got very low base armor. He's got very low base health. Queen so if he's pain. taking tower hits, he will have to back up very quickly. Queen of Pain's going to be picked up. She's got great AoE team fight, Great nuking. Good ganking with the blink. Uh, if you get a blink scream and then an ult on somebody, it'll be pretty much a, di uh, a kill unless there's like a super farmed uh, Chaos Knight or something crazy like that. So we'll have to see what the second round of bans brings around. Um, Quantic putting a bit more thought into this. This is a very gank oriented lineup that Pot and Bottom actually has right now uh, with the Nature's Prophet and the Queen of Pain and even Darkseer. Darkseer can gank decently well. You surge, you get a couple levels into the surge, you can just surge out of somewhere, you're at max move speed, you, Five seconds like, remain. nobody can outrun you, and then you can just vacuum them in for placement on sprouts or, the, or any other stuns that they might pick up. So it's a very good uh, combination they've got going right now. Uh, especially if the Darkseer can get a little farmed, get himself kind of tanky, act as more of an initiator. Uh, you know, walk in, vacuum everybody, set up a huge Queen of Pain ult, set up a good wall. And, uh... We'll have to see. I'm putting a lot of thought into this. Down to 30 seconds of bonus time already. Mind you, Pot and Bottom's already down to 19, so they're gonna have to rush through these couple bands and the couple picks. So they won't be able to put as much thought into it as they wanted. They're going to ban a Lich. Lich has good uh, lane control because of Sacrifice. And also he's got great team fight with the Chain Frost. Uh, and the Frost armor definitely shouldn't be overlooked. The, the uh, armor buff from it is pretty substantial. Then uh, Pot and Bottom is going to ban out a Storm Spirit. Storm Spirit has gr amazing ganking. I mean, you get the level 6, you walk over to a lane, you can ball lightning in there. You hit them with the slow, you throw down a replicant, electric vortex them in, hit them with more slows. It's just tons and tons of damage that you can do. Radiant on top of, you know, your teammates in the lane. 
Then we're going to see a lone druid band out. Silabar is another one of those heroes that's in this weird position. He's actually often played in the solo lane. Um, so I'm kind of surprised that Quantic didn't want to pick him up. Because they can see that Pot and Bottom already has a solo laner, really. Uh, they're going to be sending the Dark Seer solo and then the Queen of Pain mid, most likely. So uh, uh, they wouldn't really be picking a lone druid. And a lone druid would actually fit into this kind of pushing mindset that they have. The bear can become very beefy once you get some points in there. Demolish is just Ten incredible. Does so much damage to towers. Uh, and then you get like a... If you can get an, like an Assault Kuros on the bear, it'll just shred through towers. Uh, the Radiance would... Uh, help kind of mess up the team fight synergy, you know, uh, especially since remaining. these are relatively squishy early game heroes here on bottom bottom. Darkseer can become very tanky, but he generally needs to get a pipe Die and a vanguard and then like a harder, you know, I'll eventually like a heart or something like that to allow him to really just get in there, mix things up. Then we're going to see a Ricky band out by bottom bottom. Another one, I guess it would fit in with this. Uh, Quantic could be going for a hard carry, but it looks like they're going for a bit more of a push orientation. So I don't know if banning out a super hard carry like Ricky was really worth it. Um, so we'll have to see what happens. Uh, Quantic's got their next pick coming up here. They're about to dip into their bonus time, so we will have to see what they go with. Uh, a Windrunner could work with this. They could use that as a solo laner. Oh, there we go. Windrunner is going to be picked up. She's going to be the solo lane. Team uh, I imagine we're going to see Enigma Jungle with Invoker mid, Windrunner in the long lane, and then Lashrac supporting whatever their fifth pick is. Um, now, whether or not they decide to go with a hard carry, like Anti-Mage is still on the board. Um, Doom. I mean, I guess they could go with Doombringer, but he's not a super popular one. Juggernaut's still on the table. Uh... Who else? Marana. <laughs> they could go with that. They could go with something crazy like a Bloodseeker. Uh, Pot and Bottom's going to pick up Avenge. Uh, the swap is great. The alt goes through Magic Immunity to uh, help counter this Enigma. Uh, Venge basically just has to make sure that she stands away from the majority of the team so that when he blinks to do the black holes, she won't get caught in it and she can swap to break that. The uh, Magic Missile Stun, huge nuke, good stun. Uh, Howl of Terror, great armor reduction, gives you the vision. And then the aura, it gives a substantial amount of damage, uh, especially if you remaining. get quite a bit, because it is percentage-based, so you get a lot of attack damage. They're going <laughs> to... Quantic's going to scoop Radiant up a tiny. I haven't seen a tiny in a professional game in forever, but tiny also fits... Well, can fit in with this super push that uh, Quantic seems to be going for. Tiny, you get an Aghanim Scepter, you get an, well, at least a Hyperstone on him. I've even seen some Tinies go the extra step and after a Hyperstone go for a Mask of Madness. And you will just absolutely destroy Ten every tower remaining. ever. Um, the push Tiny was popularized by Na'Vi. They took uh, three sets of racks in something like two and a half minutes or something crazy like that. It was just Five insane. Um, Dragon Knight. And then Potom Bomb is going to pick up a Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight can go uh, as a carry or as like a tanky initiator. Uh, I imagine we'll probably see him go for a carry build in this. He's not a one that's picked up very often, but I mean the Breathe Fire, good nuke, good AoE. The Dragon Tail is a decent stun, especially when you've got your ult up because then it's got range. The Green Dragon form allows you to push decently well with the poison. So it's not a, a horrible pick. And we'll have to see who's playing what. We got Fogged on the Queen of Pain. Uh, Kizzles on the Vengeful Spirit. Snaking, which I think is supposed to be Seeking, on the Darkseer. Aoi 2000 on the Dragon Knight. <laughs> uh, way too sexy on... Uh, the Nature's Prophet on the score screen is saying, I hate liars like Bulba, but... And then we've got Painted Gold playing the Windrunner, Mikey on the Lashrak, Brax on the Invoker, their stand-in Donkey J on the Enigma, and then Korok playing that Tiny. And I have seen Korok play Tiny before, and it is scary. He will most likely be a big... 
big terror just running roaming around sorry I'm getting caught up reading the chat but Korok tiny is rather gank oriented he'll farm up a little bit maybe get a, like a bottle or an arcane boots and then just kind of run wander around uh, wombo comboing everybody and I'm super excited for this. I would uh, I would even give Korok an extra bro, f bro fist if he went like Dagon Tiny, but I doubt that will happen. Dagon Tiny, best build ever. And still sitting at this pause. Nobody's really bought items. <laughs> Mikey asking... Uh, Asking Toby to get them a good shot of that Quantic logo there. But I have to admit that this bottom, uh, bottom, bottom one is pretty good. It's, uh, it's pretty adorable. Some jokes being fired around. I'm guessing that the Dragonite player is... A little known for rushing Mjolnir, so they're joking around about what they should do to counter that. And he just instantly said, Reapier. Pick up a Divine. Don't worry, I won't pick it up once you die. I promise. Still sitting at a pause. Awesome feeling. Dead time. Ba dun 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 dun. Brax, I think he's new? Was he just recently picked up by Quantic? I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I didn't see any announcements that Quantic was changing their roster, but <laughs> bottom, bottom, you know, talking some shit. Looks like we're still... Okay, now it looks like we're good and underway. <laughs> Bunch of laughs. That was scary. Captain Timo reporting for duty. Prepare Apparently for Kizzles is a, a League of Legends player. Cause and I am too, so I know the I know the references. Makes me smile. Stumpy! Yes, Quantic w instantly wins a thousand karma points for having Stumpy. Especially since Bottom Bottom only has regular courier. Uh, the only courier I'm still curious about and I wanna see is the speed demon. I think that one would be pretty funny, especially once he's flying. So Dark Seer is going to be soloing this top lane up against Lashrak, and I imagine this Enigma will be dipping into the jungle. Yeah, it looks like Tiny's going to be coming up here as well. That's a pretty scary combo, because if you can, Avalanche is relatively easy to land, and it'll set up a good split earth. <laughs> Shout out to the guy that gave me this Stumpy. Good show, Mikey. We got Invoker mid, and then the Windrunner soloing the bot lane. Looks like a Dire Ward's going down here. I don't think... I think this just will keep an eye on if they're doing pulls and making sure that he doesn't get ganked. Because uh, I don't think this blocks this spawn here, so... The battle and begins. Venge DK bottom. Nature's Prophet will be in the jungle with a queen of pain mid and the dark seer top so i uh that one was a pretty straightforward well both these teams fairly straightforward lanes uh, dark seer is going to pick up a double damage but up against this top lane i don't know if he'll be able to get a whole lot of auto attacking in nature's prophet's actually going to use the treants to try and pull the creep wave through a <laughs> split earth is going to be dropped on the treants to try and get them killed even faster. The reason you do this is that it, this wave will get killed by the tower, and then you can get a double wave that a Darkseer can throw Ion Shells on and generally uh, play it nice and safe, get them some easy early farm. Looks like Korok's taking some early harass. He's got a couple of, of Observer Wars. Well, now he's got one left. No. 
Just some uh, auto attacks coming out of the Venge. Windrunner returning them. And they attack for relatively the same amount, so. Same thing happening up here. Except, uh, Tiny's taking quite a bit of uh, damage. We're gonna see an avalanche be dropped on the Dark Seer. Tiny does hit level 2. And he's gonna throw an Ion Shell out to push the wave away and then salve himself up. Invokers just kind of poking around, going for an early exhort. So it'll allow him to sun strike around, help set up kills, and give him a, quite a bit of attack damage. Uh, unfortunately, he'll have to wait till for a little bit before he'll have the cow cold snap, the cowold snap. Nature's Prophet's gonna come through to try and uh, get a couple of, of attacks in on this uh, Windrunner, but unfortunately, Voker's gonna pick up a haste rune. You should just get some easy auto attacks in. Poison's gonna come through, do some a bit of damage to the Invoker, but he's able to just uh, fire some auto attacks in, and it'll be good. A uh, Sentry Ward's actually being dropped by the Dire, looking for maybe uh, a ward sitting around here and to tr uh, block the pole camps. Ooh, Darkseer's in some trouble. He's gonna eat some Diabolic Edict. He's gonna surge himself away. It did cancel his Clarity Potion, so. Tiny got a, has a bottle already. He's going to send that back on the courier just to uh, refill that up. Lashrak trying to pull the wave through, but unfortunately not able to do that. Instead, just going to put some auto attacks in, force another surge out of this Darkseer. And how was last... Ex Whoa, of course I missed the last... The first blood. First blood. Looks like they uh, dove in on the uh, Invoker with some support from Nature's Prophet. Queen of Pain picks that one up. Well, let's have a look at the last hits. 13 and 5 on the Queen of Pain. And then 6 and 2 on Invoker. That's unfortunate. And we've got a 16 and 4 Dragon Knight up against a 5 and 1 Windrunner. That's not too surprising. Windrunner, e even though she's a very powerful solo laner up against a dual lane, she's got to play super, super careful. 11-0 uh, on the Dark Seer, and 17-8 and on this Tiny, and a 3-4 and four Lishrak, so it's about the same story. I'll the Dark Seer is doing... <coughs> Sorry, I got to clear my throat. Dark Seer is doing a little bit better because he's able to throw Ion Shells out, which will get him some damage. As you can see, you know, he's... Tiny actually taking a bunch of damage from that. We're going to see Nature's Prophet TP in. He's actually going to cancel it. Darkseer putting quite a bit of uh, Ion Shell damage in. Tiny's going to take a drink from his bottle. And he's going to find himself a Nature's Prophet. At the Avalanche is going to come through. Tiny gets the kill on that. Malefice is being dropped. The toss is going to finish that off. Good split earth landed as well. Great support from the Enigma who had a DD rune. So, good swing for this tiny. Going to be a nice early influx. That basically gives him arcane boots. He's going to pop a clarity. Just get himself up a little bit more. And he's actually going to pick up the power treads this game. Uh, not a ho awful either. Uh, simply because it does allow you to tr uh, tread switch when you go to take drinks from your bottle. And with the bottle, he's able to basically one bottle charge will give him his combo, so. And unfortunately, didn't quite work out like they were hoping. The Darkseer does have a Ring of Regen and a Sage's Mask. Looking to do a Soul Ring. And he's actually going to go in on the Tiny here. I don't know if he really should, because... Even though Tiny's low health, he has enough for an avalanche, at least. His bottle's actually on the courier, so... He'll be able to get that back soon enough. As long as he plays it safe, he won't take too much damage from this Ion Shell. Let the tower do most of the work. And actually missed the last hit. Let's try, or, nope, Enigma in the jungle, actually. 
what's coming on the courier. The soul ring recipe, so that'll give Darkseer a, a bit of an uh, oh shit button in case he needs the mana for uh, like a... Oh, and we're actually going to see a Malefice on Darkseer and the tiny combo decimates him. Invoker's actually got Queen of Pain and Nature's Prophet coming after him. He's going to be able to make it out though. Pops a Tango. He's uh, just got boots and two Ironwood branches. Unfortunately, not doing too well. Are we going to see some fast push coming in on this top tower? Windrunner's sitting on a ring of protection and boots. And Invoker's just going to switch himself all to Quas. Doesn't give him the greatest because it's only level 1. But it still gives him a decent amount. Quickly swap into Exhort in order to get last hits. Yeah, it looks like they're going to try and push this tower quick. Invoker's going to send himself some more Tangos. It's taking quite a bit of harass. Is the Queen of Pain going for... Alright, yeah, going for the Scream, scream the into Shadow Strike. Glyph's going to be used to absorb most of this Diabolic Edict damage. But I really don't think it's going to matter. Because they've got the Eidolons. The Eidolons actually don't manage to split. Which is a little unfortunate. Toss is going to be used to... Oh, black hole on both the Queen of Pain and the Darkseer. That's huge. Lestrat gets the kill on that. Nature's Prophet gets the kill on... T well, actually, he comes in to help out with Tiny. Gets a kill on the Enigma. Or on the Lestrat. Enigma gets the last hit on that, and then Venge teleports in to finish it off with a uh, magic missile. So I do believe that was a 4 or 3 for 3 exchange. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dragonite coming forward, doing quite a bit of damage to this tower. The corrosive breath does so much damage. 20 a second. Allows him to just push a tower like no tomorrow. Tiny's going to TP back up here. He's got himself a magic wand. He's got himself an extra ironwood branch. And he's got level 4 toss, level 3 avalanche. So the uh, Darkseer is going to have to be careful here. Uh, Invoker's making a little bit of a comeback. He probably will go for tre or maybe phase boots into... Oh, Dragonite actually gets a kill on Windrunner. Sorry, I missed that one. Magic Missile's going to come through on the track. Treants are going to come out. And Nature's Prophet's going to finish off. Lashrak the there. They're going to get this tower. Invoker. Oh, sorry. I was adjusting myself, but a sun strike lands on the Nature's Prophet. Very well played by the Invoker there. Great that he was able to scoop up and salvage a little bit of that engagement. They lost the tower, but they got a... They did get a kill out of it, so it's not a total loss. Treants are going to march through here. Vengeful Spirit's going to pick up a double damage rune. Wander maybe over towards the mid lane. Yep. She's going to come up here. Look to get a magic missile in on this invoker. That'll allow the Queen of Pain to just jump in and decimate him. He's got power treads now. Toss is going to go through on the Dark Seer. Finish him off. Nature's Prophet Ult's going to come through to try and clear out the Eidolons, but the tower still goes down. Invoker's gonna die. He did Ghost Walk, but there was this Sentry Ward right here. So they're gonna look to push this mid-tier one. Darkseer's gonna TP up top, because Lashrak and Tiny are looking to pressure the tier two. Looking to at least tower trade so much push coming out of pot and bottom. Dyer's middle tower is under Nature's Prophet gets the last hit on that. Glyph was down. Fallen. Tiny already has a blink dagger. 10 minute blink. Very, very fast. Nimbus has got himself soul ring mech. Lashrax sitting on just boots, buying wards. Invoker has his magic wand. He's got some tangos. He's got his power treads. 
And Windrunner's got a Ring of Basilius. Actually gets a Shackle in on this Dragon Knight. And Tiny keeps tossing out of the uh, Sun Strikes. I mean, it doesn't matter because the toss kills. But it just makes me laugh that he can see the Sun Strike coming in. And he just kind of goes, nope. Enigma's going to pause this. Tiny's sitting on bottle power treads and a blink. He Let the be, uh, reign of terror begin. He's already got level 4 in both his toss and avalanche. Level 1 grow. And everyone's saying they are ready to go. So <laughs> Nice short pause. Ooh, Tiny's gonna find a Nature's Prophet here. He's only got boots and a mech. Toss comes through, Avalanche goes on. Mech does get popped. Sunstrike's gonna come through. Oh, it misses. Oh, that's unfortunate. Tiny does get the kill, but Queen of Pain slows him. He's just gonna TP out. Ult's gonna be popped to finish that off. Dragonite's gonna actually find Latrak in the jungle while that happens. And Invoker has to run away now. Midnight Pulse is going to go down on the Venge. Malefice, Black Hole dropped on just the Vengeful Spirit. Invoker does get the last hit on that. Queen of Pain's going to go in. Enigma's just going to TP out. Fortunately, the Dragon's Tail didn't come in fast enough. And Staff of Wizardry and a TP scroll come into the Windrunner. She actually doesn't have room for the Staff of Wizardry. Now she brings it to her. Give herself some more auto attack damage. That's going to be for a force staff. And Enigma's just going to come up here, farm the uh, the lane. You know, nobody's sitting here. Might as well make some Eidolons and get some last hits. Tiny's going to... He's looking to get some Queen of Pain. They do have a cold snap ready to uh, allow some follow-up stuns. Teleport's gonna come through. Cold Snap's gonna land on her. Sun Strikes. Oh, she turns around at the last second. Venge Stun's gonna come through. That was a little bit of some miscommunication. Splitter's gonna land on absolutely nothing. Queen of Pain's gonna bottle some stuff up. She actually, Tiny goes back in for her. Manages to get the avalanche and toss in on, on her. She should have just uh, backed up. You know, figured that maybe he was still sticking around. Four Spirit, Diabolic Edict's gonna come through. Glyph's gonna be popped. Nature's Prophet Ult coming through to uh, damage this creep wave up. We're gonna see Darkseer TP in. Venge Stun's gonna go down on the Lashrak. Dragon Knight's gonna pop up. Swap's gonna go through on the Lashrak. Split Earth does land on the Venge and a Cold Snap. So that's gonna be a dead Venge. She actually goes down to Creeps. And Tiny manages to TP to the high ground, run away from three heroes, TP out. So they got the tower, they lost Lashrac, but they also got the Venge. So it was a similar exchange as to uh, what happened at this first tier one bottom here. And uh, we're actually going to see a smoke be pumped on three heroes here. And they're going to go for a walk. They actually might find the Dragon Knight here. And he's just about to come out of dragon form. Oh, poor Dragon Knight. Sun Strike's going to come through. That misses, but they're going to see Avalanche on top. Midnight Pulse comes through. The Diabolic Edict damage. The Malefice. When, or Vengeful Spirit's going to TP in. But she has to be careful. Toss is going to land. Throws her on Dragon Knight. Doesn't get the kill on the Dragon Knight, but Venge does go down. And they're just going to back up. They met. They didn't get the Dragon Knight, but they managed to get a kill. And they are fine with that. Or are they? <laughs> Korok playing. A little reckless, going balls deep. He does have his point booster already. That's going to be for an Aghanims. Just going to come up here, stop this... Uh, push a little bit yeah. 
We're going to see a Queen of Pain, Darkseer, surge forward. Attack. Nature's Prophet's also going to come through. They're going to look to take this tower. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Tiny going to go Dyer's for the last. Misses the avalanche, gets vacuumed, gets slowed. Ion Shell doing a ton of damage. Going to toss her away. Or toss him away. Gets four staff forward. Cold snap going down. Sunstrike coming forward. Sunstrike's gonna get a kill on the Dark Seer. Queen of Pain manages Death to blink forward. The, top tower has fallen. the tower goes down to creeps in the meantime. Good attempt to save Tiny by the Invoker. Managed to delay it at least long enough to get a kill on the Dark Seer. And Invoker's going to find himself an invis. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Windrunner throwing some wards down. Get some last hits with Power Shot. Actually going to uh, attack her own Ironwood branch. Accidentally bought one to uh, make a uh, magic wand without realizing that already had one on the ground. Four staff is finished on the Windrunner as well. We'll probably see Invoker go for drums. Nigma's got his power treads up. He's nearly got his magic wand finished. It's about 40 gold away from that. Nature's Prophet's gonna abort that TP. Knowing that his teammates were backing up. And uh, Queen of Pain's actually gonna look to finish off these... Forge Spirits gonna take quite a bit of cold snap damage. Some more new Forge Spirits are gonna come out. Queen of Pain TP's in. Went to heal up. TP's back. She's also got a point booster. Probably going to be for a uh, Aghanim Scepter. Queen of Pain comes forward, gets a poison down. Vengeful stun's gonna come through on the tiny. Shackle shot does not latch. Split Earth completely misses. Windrunner's in some trouble. Wind runs away. Tiny's gonna get a kill. Sunstrike doesn't land. Korok goes down. Darkseer's in some trouble. He gets hit by a split earth. He's gonna actually manage to run away though. Oh, Queen of Pain gets a kill on Nature's or on the uh the Shrek. Invoker gets a kill on the Nature's Prophet. Windrunner kills the Venge, and Queen of Pain also went down. Who did Queen of Pain go down? Dyer's middle tower Enigma. Is under attack. Whole bunch of exchanges. Windrunner's gonna TP mid to stop that push, and they're gonna look to do a huge push here. Eidolons actually die, but I think Invoker can take this decently haste. enough. Dragonite's gonna find a haste rune. Summon some new Forge Spirits. TP come, coming through by Darkseer. He's going to look to pop Ion Shell, Vacuum. Help clear this up. He's actually got a Point Booster. Didn't Decided not to go for a Vanguard. Which, I don't know if that's the best decision. I guess the Stout Shield blocks enough of the uh, Eidolon and uh, Forge Spirit damage. But having that regen, good idea, because you're going to be taking quite a bit of harass from them. Or even, uh, if you don't want to get the vanguard right away, go for, like, a hood instead. Stop this tiny from just blinking on you and destroying you. Because, I mean, even with a point booster, he's only got, like, 1100 health. And... The Tusk uh, Avalanche combo doesn't quite kill him, but it definitely does a big amount of damage. Splitter's going to land on the Queen of Pain. She's going to take a bunch of Edict damage. Vacuum's going to land on two. Windrunner's going to run away. Mech actually gets dropped. The Queen of Pain gets stunned. Malaface going through on the Nature's Prophet. He's going to go maybe sur get surged. Darkseer actually going to vacuum. Tiny's gonna throw a toss out, try and get the Lashrak. He manages to get the Lashrak, but Invoker gets a kill on him. That was a 
three for one exchange. Nature's Prophet barely made it out. I think he was down to like 50 HP. One more auto attack from either uh, any of these heroes, but that's gonna mean a Roshan for them. <laughs> Korok taking a lot of bashes there. Shackle Shot's gonna stop that for a little bit. Roshan and Tiny gets that Aegis. He's already got the Ogre Club for his uh, Aghanims. So he's about 1100 gold. Actually more like 1050 away from finishing that. And he's looking to just flash farm. Toss avalanches. He knows that a team fight's not going to be happening for the next like 30 seconds or so. So he's safe to uh, blow those cooldowns. He's got bottle charges. We're actually going to see Venge using magic missiles, blowing mana to farm these easy camps. I don't know if that's the best idea, especially when you're behind. You never know when you need that magic missile to stop like a tiny. If you are, are fast enough, you may, you may see him blink in. And you might be able to get like a uh, quick stun in on him between the avalanche and toss. But I guess we should look at this. 4,000 gold in the Dyer's favor experience. 10,000 in the Dyer experience. Or, uh, favor. Not to be... Not all that surprising considering how much ganking and how many team fights have been won by the Quantic Squad. Although Pot on Bottom definitely playing well. Radiance bottom tower They've been doing great. Attack. Items looking structures are Queen of Pain, so she's about 1500 gold, 1400 gold off of that Aghanims. The Venge looking, looks like she's just picking up Brave Dragonite's actually gonna pop his ult. He's already got level 2 ult. They're looking for the team fight instead. Ghostwalk's gonna be popped. They're actually gonna use Dust to find the Invoker. Surge is gonna be popped, but a bit of hero blocking going down. The Avalanche is gonna be popped out. It actually misses the Darkseer. Tornado doesn't, though. They actually get a swap on the Windrunner. Dragon Tail comes through. She's gonna die. And then Aish's Prophet was looking to, uh, or no, it looked like it was Lashrac looking to TP down, but they realized that they aren't chasing anymore. So the Dark Seer is starting to work on a pipe. Looks like he just picked up the point booster to give himself some more HP and mana. Dragonite looking to do the same. He's got a Sanj. And now he's looking to pick up a BKB. Looks like he's just getting the cloak to help reduce this tiny's damage. Nature's Prophet's got Mech, Treads, and Necro 1. The Windrunner's finished Arcane Boots. She's got Four Staff, Ring of Basilius. And that's a dead Venge. And they're actually going to find... Oh, Tiny has his Aghanims finished. So he's going to be blowing through creep waves. He's got a cleave now. So he's got Aegis. He's got Aghanims. He's got an Illusion Rune bottled up there. Invoker has finished his drums. Got four staff. Now we might see him go for like a sheep stick or an Aghanims. Give him zero cooldown or nearly zero cooldown on the uh, Invoke. Toss is going to come through to do a bit of damage. Tiny just shreds through that tower. Fell so fast. Enigma's working on a BKB. He's about 300 gold off that. Or no, 700 gold off that. And Lashrac sitting on a point booster and a bracer and phase boots. And some, some TP scrolls, some wards. Toss is going to come through. BKB popped by the Dragon Knight. Tiny's probably going to go down here. No, he ma oh, Venge Swap comes through. Aegis is blown. Black Hole is going to go down. Chaos Meteor is going to come through. Lashrac gets the kill on the Tiny, or Dragon Knight. Tiny gets a kill on the Darkseer. And Venge is going to go down to the Windrunner. Lashrac gets a kill on the Lashrac, or the Queen of Pain. English is hard. That is a five for nothing exchange. Triple kill on Lashrac. He doesn't have enough mana to do a... Uh, 
Edict, unfortunately. He's just going to run away. But that's going to be a set of racks. And I don't think anyone can buy back. Could buy back. The Queen of Pain could buy back. Why? I don't know why the Queen of Pain wouldn't buy back to at least try and put up some resistance. But I guess saving it because you know that with just a Queen of Pain, you aren't really going to be able to stop anything. Alacrity dropped on Korok. He's swinging that tree around so fast. Boker gets the last hit on that. They're going to just take the tier 3. They know that most of the team's up. They're going to allow Eidolons and Four Spirits to put some damage in on this uh, Rax, but they're happy with taking two, well, a set of Rax and another, an extra tier 3. They're just going to back up. Probably going to be seeing some big purchases on this Quantic squad now. Big influx of gold. 12,000 gold just going straight down in the Dyer's favor. And experience is steady out a little bit, but it's been a constant, constantly in Quantic's favor as well. Nature's Prophet actually looking to catch some people out. Enigma's got a BKB finished. Probably looking to pick up a Blink next. And a whole bunch of stuff on the Courier. Uh, looks like Windrunner is actually going for... A sheep stick. Lashrak probably going for a... Yeah, looks like he's going for a sheep stick as well. He's got a ghost scepter. Allow him to dodge a little bit of auto attack damage coming out of these people. Uh, Tiny's got a hyper stone. Invoker picks up a sheep Double stick, damage. actually. So he's got that sitting for him. Give him some good team fight ability. Well, better team fight ability as if Invoker didn't have team fight already. So we're seeing the Hyperstone picked up, and I do believe that is a dead Chaos Knight. He pops BKB, he's going to try and TP out. Oh, he manages to TP out. Vacuum's going to come through, they're looking to go on this Darkseer now. The Shackle actually lashes onto the Venge. He surged forward, Splitter is going to land, Chaos Meter is going to come through. Venge also goes down to the Enigma. And Queen of Pain tries to finish up Korok. Korok just decides to man up mode, turns around, avalanche toss, puts in a couple auto attacks. Top tower has fallen. And they're going to take this tier 2. Nature's Prophet actually has Necro level 2 now. Focus Fire going to be popped on this tower. And... Anyone notice that the projectile actually comes out of a weird location? Invoker gets the last hit on that tower. Cold Snap's gonna go down on the Dragon Knight. His ult's gonna end. Malefice on the Nature's Prophet. Split Earth easily dropped. Black Hole gonna be dropped on both Nature's Prophet and Chaos Knight. BKB popped by the Enigma. Are we gonna see a Sunstrike attempt? That'd be sexy. Nope. Instead, they're just going to turn around, split Earth onto the Dark Seer, get a double kill there. Dragon Knight comes back in, Ghost Walking Invoker. They're going to get a Shackle onto the Dark or Queen of Pain. Venge is going to get a la Magic Missile on the Enigma, but a Tornado is going to come through, help save him. Oh, the Sunstrike misses, and Dragon Knight actually gets a kill on the Invoker. But, in the meantime, the four spirits will manage to get a top barracks. Invoker buys back immediately. Maleficent is going to be dropped on this Queen of Pain. Shackle's going to land on her. That's going to be a dead Queen of Pain. The Enigma using himself as bait. Manages to turn around, get a Maleficent down. So that's two sets of racks. That's actually all of the racks except... This ranged ones. Creeps pushing out this bottom lane. Sunstrike's gonna come through. Abs hit absolutely nothing. And there's Mega Creeps. So bottom bottom calls GG. They know that there's really no coming back from this. Especially with a Tiny. With an Assault Curas and an Aghanims. And that was... 
Avenge that just shredded. Dragon Tail is going to be dropped on this tiny BKB popped by the Dragon Knight. Ice Wall is going to go down. Another Dragon Tail coming through, this time hitting Invoker. Shackle doesn't land, it hits the Necro Archer. Queen of Pain Alt is going to come through. The Split Earth actually misses. Malefice is going to be dropped. The Mech's going down. Ghost Scepter going to be dropped used by the Lashrak. Nature's Prophet actually gets a kill on Enigma with his ult. But, I mean, it's only a matter of time before the creeps push this out. They're gonna look to take down all these little buildings. These buildings actually do serve a purpose. They act as a little buffer. The creeps will go for them first, rather than running straight to your tower. Vengeful Spirit actually gets Lashrak. Lashrak buys back. Windrunner's gonna TP out, or attempt to. Queen of Pain actually gets a kill on that buyback immediately by the Queen of Pain, or by the Windrunner. Wow, talking is hard. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. They do manage to hold it off for a little bit, but both of these towers looking very, very slow. And just like 133 auto attack damage on those ranged creeps. Sunstrike comes through, doesn't hit anything. I don't even know where that landed. I think it, they were just using it to uh, nuke down the creep waves a little bit. Roshan, Roshan goes down to Quantic. Tiny's going to pick that up. This tier 4 tower, the base tower, goes down. Enigma gets a blink at the end of the game. And final push to end the game. I apologize for fumbling so much in the team fights. Uh, I don't know what's up with me today. Getting confused. Sunstrike's gonna come through. They're actually gonna throw a shackle out on the Venge here. Dragonite's gonna pop his dragon form. He gets sheep sticked. Alacrity's gonna come through on the tiny. Enigma's gonna get Dragon Tail. He's gonna get magic missile. And Enigma gets a kill on the Enigma or the Dragon Knight. And Tiny kills the Queen of Pain right at the end of the game there. Well played by Quantic. Good to see that they're having a bit more success. Throwing some shoutouts to uh, the sponsors. There's the final score screen. Let you look at that. Let you guys look at that for a little bit. My name was Blightwind. This was an another one of the defense games. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like and favor. It definitely helps. Uh, new casters like me get some exposure, leave a comment on how I can improve myself, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.